I grew up in Perth. I was born in Perth. And I grew up in a, in, a, in a big family, or eventually was a big family. I was the oldest of four. I've got a younger brother and two younger sisters. Uh, we were a very you know, noisy, boisterous kind of family. I was lucky to have a very uh, stable family. Uh, my dad worked as a surgeon and did that until he retired just recently. And my mum uh, was a full-time stay-at-home mum. And uh, yeah, that really set up a, you know, a lot of opportunities and, and, uh, and possibilities for me, for which I feel very, very fortunate. You know, I think what was really important in my family as I grew up was I thought of three things really. One was to be kind to each other and to, to everybody really. Uh, a second thing was to uh, take life pretty seriously and try and do good things in the world. Uh, and the third thing was to sort of balance that a little bit was to was to have a laugh at ourselves and and uh, and the things that are around us that are that are funny. And and those three things really came together and created a, a sort of a you know a happy and uh, and uh, and fun uh, family life and usually pretty pretty chaotic so now you know roll the clock forward um, 20 odd years and I've got my own family and it's a similar sort of uh, sort of setup really uh, my wife works uh, three days a week Tamara she's a lawyer by training and now works in insurance my kids are uh, Jacob who's 14 and Abigail who's 12 and Sam who's 10 pretty boisterous pretty assertive young children. I've got. They bring a lot of, you know, joy and, and happiness and a fair bit of stress from time to time as well. So, you know, we, we live a pretty, really busy life. When I'm not driving the kids around or uh, at work or sleeping, I do cycle, uh, cycle a lot. I also am involved in a charity bike event called the Ride for Youth, where uh, we raise money for you know, children, young people suffering with uh, mental illness. And uh, we raise money and awareness as we cycle from Albany to Perth. Uh, which has been absolutely fantastic and, uh, and really life-changing sort of experience. And I uh, play a little bit of music, um, very much in my own garage, and uh, don't get many people to listen to it much uh, these days. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun when, we, when, when, I, when I manage to find some time for that. Now the kids play a little bit as well, so we, we sometimes get together and have a crack at, uh, at bashing out a tune which most people wouldn't recognise. It's a very exciting uh, time in, uh, in this uh, sector, I guess you'd call it, across the whole range of um, different kinds of social care and, and as a group we're, covered, we're involved in uh, aged care and uh, mental health and, uh, and also disability. Um, and all of those um, areas are undergoing a lot of change. Some of it is being driven by uh, the rules and the way that the government is, uh, is thinking about it and funding it but it also comes uh, from the way consumers of those services are expecting uh, to be treated and served uh, and their ability to access what they want when they want it at a, at a price that they're willing to, to, uh, to pay. So I think that's uh, an exciting challenge and I actually think for very many people, um, very many users of these kinds of services, this will be a, a, real, um, a real benefit and a real improvement on the way things have been. Um, I feel that this is the right kind of change and it's been driven by the consumers, which is exactly uh, what, uh, what we want. And as a, as a provider, three, now one provider, you know, we need to respond to that. I think it's our duty really to respond to that. We owe it to the people of Western Australia and, uh, and beyond to deliver services that make a big difference to people's lives and, uh, and that are done in a you know, cost-effective way. One of the things that I feel pretty passionately about and uh, this, um, this organisation is an opportunity to, to play a role in uh, is that you know, for folks who are living uh, with some challenges, whether that's related to a disability or a mental illness or, or just getting older, that they still have aspirations and hopes and dreams. And in the past, things haven't always responded to that. Uh, services haven't always been well tailored to, to really meeting those needs. And so I think what we're all about is services and supports that help people gain or regain or maintain dignity uh, to feel a sense of purpose and to live the life that they want to live. Um, and the combination of our organisations, the kind of services that we offer, uh, with some creativity and, uh, and, and uh, some courage from us, um, I think we can make a really big difference to a lot of lives. One of the, uh, the challenges, I guess, with, with doing a merger like we're trying to do, bringing three organisations, is uh, that creates a lot of uncertainty in the minds of everybody who's given their heart and soul to these individual organisations uh, for weeks, months or years. 
Uh, and that is a, uh, a reality. It's something that um, I can empathise with. Um, I've uh, experienced that sense on, from both sides of the, of the equation. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, I just think we need to be understanding of each other and ourselves that that's where we're at right now. One of the things I said to uh, the groups of people I met on my first day, the, the, the folks who were able to get along uh, uh, when I visited each of the, the different organisations, um, was that I would make three commitments. The first was to recognise that the expertise and commitment re resides in the people who are here. Now, I'm not an expert in any of these organisations. The current employees and volunteers are the experts and are the custodians of the mission. And so my first commitment is that I will listen to as many people as I possibly can, individually and collectively, to understand uh, what it is that we do and what it is that we stand for. The second commitment is to uh, try and continue to merge these organisations as fast as we can and really get through this period of uncertainty uh, as rapidly as possible. Um, there are lots of uh, decisions to make and uh, some of those decisions will take some time uh, and I'm not sure how fast is fast. It's longer than a week and it's less than a year, you know, uh, but some point in the next you know, few months, we want to be trying to remove as much of that uncertainty as we can and get on with a, a new kind of normal, which is uh, what this combined organisation is going to look like going forward. The third commitment is, is really not negotiable for me, and that is that every person in this organisation um, will be treated with respect and dignity through this process. Uh, for me, that means being as open and honest as I possibly can be, and, uh, and the team of, uh, of managers and everybody in the organisation needs to be open with each other about where things are at, what decisions have been made, what have not been made, and regardless of uh, how people fit in to the future organisation, that that'll be done uh, as respectfully and, uh, and honestly as, uh, as, as humanly possible. That's something that I hold myself to and I expect it from everybody else in the organisation. Having said that, uh, you know, those commitments are about getting through a short period of instability and uh, the real excitement is the organisation that we collectively are building. Uh, you know, leveraging what is fantastic about uh, the three organisations that have come together, um, looking to the future and, and innovating and creating new ways of, of doing great things in, in this state. Uh, and I think the community of Western Australia will benefit from that into 2017 and beyond.